we're back at your storage service. Emil Stam is here. He's the chief commercial officer and chief marketing officer of OpenLine. Thank you, Emil, for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate your time. Thank you, David. Nice, uh, glad to be here. Yeah, so tell us about OpenLine. You're a managed service provider. What's your focus? Yeah, we're actually a cloud managed service provider. I do put cloud in front of the managed services because it's not just only the service that we manage. We have to manage the clouds as well nowadays. And unfortunately, everybody only thinks there's one cloud, but it's always multiple layers in the cloud. So we have a lot of work in the integrating it. We're a cloud managed service provider in the Netherlands, focusing on companies who have a head office in the Netherlands, mainly in the uh, healthcare, local government, social housing, logistics department, and then in the mid-sized companies between say 250 to 10,000 office employees. Uh, and, and that's what we do. We provide them with excellent cloud managed services uh, as it should be. Interesting, you know, a lot of early on in the cloud days, highly regulated industries like healthcare and government were somewhat afraid of the cloud. So I'm sure that's one of the ways in which you provide value to your customers is helping them become cloud proficient. Maybe you could talk a little bit more about the value prop to customers. Why do they do business with you? Yeah, I think uh, there are a number of reasons why they do business with us or choose to choose for our managed services provider. Uh, at first, they, of course, are looking for stability and continuity uh, and, and from a cost perspective, predict, uh, predictable costs. Uh, but nowadays you also have a shortage in personnel and knowledge. So, and it's not always very easy for them to access uh, those skill sets because most IT people just want to have uh, a great variety in work, what they are doing, uh, towards towards the local government, uh, healthcare, social housing. They actually uh, a sector that uh, that are really in between embracing the public cloud, but also have a lot of legacy, and and bringing together best of all worlds is what we do. So we also bring them comfort. We do understand what legacy. Uh, needs from a managed service perspective. We also know how to leverage the benefits in the public cloud. Uh, and uh, I'd say from a marketing perspective, actually we focus on using an ideal cloud, being a mix of traditional and future-based cloud. Thank you. I, you know, I'd like to get your perspective on this idea of as a service and the as a service economy that we often talk about on theCUBE. I mean, you work with a lot of different companies, we talked about some of the industries and, and increasingly it seems like organizations are focused more on outcomes and continuous value delivery via you know suites of services and, and they're leaning into platforms versus one-off product offerings. I, you know, do you see that? How do you see your customers reacting to this as a service trend? Yeah, uh, uh, to be honest, sometimes it makes it more complex because services like you look at your know, Android or an iPhone, you can buy apps uh, and download apps the way you want to. So you have a lot of apps, but how do you integrate it into one excellent workflow? Something that works for you, David, or works for me. Uh, so the difficulty some sli sometimes lies in uh, the easy accessibility that you have to those solutions, but nobody takes into account that they're all part of a chain a workflow, a supply chain, uh, and, and uh, they're being hyped as well. So well, we also have a lot of time in, 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 in managing our customers is that the tremendous future push, feature push that there is from technology providers, SaaS providers, whereas if you provide 10 features, you only need one or two. Uh, but the other eight are very distracting from your prime core business. Uh, so there's a natural way in that people are embracing uh, SaaS solutions, embracing cloud solutions, uh, but what's not taken into account as much as that we would love to see it's the way that you integrate all those solutions towards something that's workable for the person that's actually using them. And it's seldomly that somebody is only using one solution. There's always a chain of solutions. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of opportunities, but also a lot of challenges for us, but also for our customers. Do you see that trend toward as a service continuing or do you actually see based on what you're just saying that pendulum, you know, swinging back and forth, somebody comes out with a new sort of feature product and that, you know, changes the dynamic or do you see the as a service really having legs? 
Ah, I th I th that's a very, very good question, David, because that's something that's keeping us busy all the time. We do see a trend in as a service. Looking at, uh, I'll talk about Pure later on, we also use Pure as a service, more or less, yeah, and that really helps us. Uh, but you see uh, um, that sometimes people make a step too, too fast, too quick, not well thought of. Uh, and then you see what they call the sort of cloud repatriation tendency that people go back to what they are doing. And then they stop innovating or stop leveraging the possibilities that are actually there. Uh, so from a consultancy, a guidance, an architecture point of view, we try to help them as much as possible to think in a SaaS talk, but just don't use the cloud as just another data center. Uh, uh, so it's all about managing the maturity on our side, but on our customer side as well. So I'm interested in how your sort of your philosophy and, and it relates, I think, in, in in terms of how you work with Pure. But how do you stay tightly in lockstep with, with your customers so that you don't over rotate, so that you don't incent, incent them to over rotate, but then you're not, also you don't want to be too late to the game. How, how do you manage all that? Oh, there's, there's, there's a world of interactions between us and our customers. Uh, so I think a well-known uh, uh, thing that people know is customer intimacy. Yeah, that's very important for us to get to know our customers and get to predict which way they are moving. But the, the, the thing that we add to it is also the ecosystem intimacy. So know the application and services landscape of our customers, know the primary providers and work with them. Uh, to 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 create something that that really fits the customers. To so just not look at from our own silo, we're a cloud managed service provider. No, we actually work in the ecosystem with 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 the primary providers. And we have, I think, with the average customers, I think we have uh, 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 in a month we have so much interactions on the operational level, on the technical level, strategic level. We do bring together our customers also uh, to jointly think about what we can do together, what we independently can never reach. Uh, but we also involve our customers in uh, defining our own strategy. So we have something we call a customer involvement board, where we present a strategy and say, does it make sense? Uh, this is actually what you need also. So, so we take a lot of our effort into our customers and we do also uh, understand the significant moments of truth. We are now in this in this broadcast, David. Eh? So you can imagine that at this moment, nothing can go wrong. Eh? If 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 the internet stops, eh, we have a problem now. So we we actually know that this broadcast is going on for our customers, and we manage that it's always on. Eh? Uh, where in the other moments in the week, we might have a little less attention, but this moment we should be there. And these moments of truth. Uh, we really embrace, we got them well described. Everybody working in open line knows what the moment of truth is for our customers. Uh, uh, so we have a big logistics provider, for instance, he does not have to ask us to uh, have uh, a higher availability on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. We know that's the most important part in the year for him or her. Does it answer your question, David? Yes, we know as well, you know, when these big, you know, the big game moments, you have to be on your top, uh, top of yeah. your game. Uh, you know, the other thing, Emil, about this as a service approach that I really like is, is it's a lot of it is consumption based and the data doesn't lie. You can see adoption, you know, daily, weekly, monthly. And so I wonder how you're leveraging pure as a service specifically and what kind of patterns you're seeing in, in, in the adoption. Uh, yeah, pure as, as a service for our customers is mainly never visible. Uh, we provide storage services, we provide storage solutions. The storage is part of a bigger thing, of a server, of an application. Uh, so the real benefits, to be honest, of, of course, towards our customers, it's all flash, uh, uh, and they have the fastest, fastest storages available. But for ourselves, we uh, we use less resources to manage our storage. We're far more adept, but we have a near to maintenance free storage solution now because we have it as a service and we work closely together with Pure. Uh, so uh, actually the way out we treat our customers is the way Pure treats us as well. And that's why there's a huge click. So the real benefits uh, how we leverage is that normally we had a bunch of guys managing our storage. Now we only have one. And knowing that's a shortage of IT personnel, the other persons can well be uh, involved in other parts of our services or in other parts of an innovation. So uh, that's simply great. 
You know, uh, my takeaway, Emil, is that you've made infrastructure, at least, at least the storage infrastructure, invisible to your customers, which is the way it should be. You shouldn't have to worry about it. And you've you've also attacked the the labor problem. You're not you know provisioning lungs anymore, or you know tuning the storage, you know, with with arms and legs. So that's huge. So that gets me into the next topic, which is business transformation. That that means that I can now start to attack the operational model. So I've got a different IT model now. I'm not managing infrastructure the same way I used to. So I have to shift those resources. And I'm presuming that it's a business now becomes a business transformation discussion. How are you seeing your customers shift those resources and focus more on their business as a result of this sort of as a service trend? I think I do not know if they they transform their business thanks to us. I think that they can more leverage their own business, yeah, have less problems, less maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. But we also add new uh, certainties to it. It's like uh, uh, the, the latest service we, we released was immutable storage. Being the first in the Netherlands offering this, thanks to uh, thanks to the pure technology, but for customers, it takes them and gives them a good night's rest. Yeah, because, you know, we have some uh, geopolitical issues in the world. Uh, there's a lot of hacking. People have a lot of ransomware attacks. And, and we just give them a good night rest. So from a business transformation, does it transform their business? I think that gives them more comfort in running your business, knowing that certain things are well arranged. You don't have to worry about that. We will do that. We'll take that out of your hands. And you just go ahead and run your business. Um, so to me, yep. it's not really a transformation, it's just using the right opportunities at the right moment. The immutable piece is interesting because of course, but speaking of as a service, you know, anybody can go on the dark web and buy ransomware as a service. I mean, it's, it's right, you're seeing the as a service economy hit hit everywhere, the good and the and the not so good. Um, and so I presume that your customers are, are looking at immutability as another service capability of the service offering and really rethinking maybe because of yep. the recent, you know, ransomware attacks, rethinking how they they approach uh, business continuance, business resilience, disaster recovery. Do you see that? Yep, definitely, definitely. I think uh, not all of them yet. Yeah. Immutable storage is so it's like an insurance as well. Yeah, what you mm -hmm. have when you have immutable storage and you have been a, you have a ransomware attack. At least you have your parts of data, which never if data is corrupted, you cannot restore it. If your hardware is broken, you can order new hardware. If your data is corrupted, you cannot order new data. Now, we got that safe and well, and so we offered them the possibility to, to do the forensics and free up their uh, the data without a tremendous loss of time. Uh, but you also see that you raise the new, uh, how do you say it, uh, the new baseline for other providers as well. Uh, so the security of the corporate information, security officer, the CIO, they're all very, happy with that and they, they 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 raise the baseline for others as well so they can look at other security topics and look from say a security operation center that now we can really focus on our prime business risks because from a technical perspective we got it covered how can we manage the business risk uh, which is a combination of people processes and technology it right, makes sense. Okay, I'll give you the last word. Uh, talk about your relationship with Pure, where you want to see that that going in, in the future. Uh, I hope we'll be working together for a long time. I, I, I ex uh, experience them as very involved. Uh, it's not we have done the sell and now it's all up to you. No, we're really closely working together. I know if I talk to my prime architect, Marcel Heite is very happy and it looks more or less if we work with Pure, like we're working with colleagues, not with a supplier uh, and a customer. Uh, and. Uh, the whole pure concept is quite fascinating. I, I, uh, I had the opportunity to visit San Francisco head office and they told me the vision, how they launched uh, pure being, if you want to implement it, it had to be on one credit card. The, the, the menu had to be on one credit card. Just a simple thought of put that as your big, hairy, audacious goal to make the simplest uh, implementable storage available, but fast. Uh, it gives me the expectation that there will be a lot of more surprises with pure in the near future. Uh, and for us as a provider, what we uh, really, really look forward to is that, that for us, these new developments will not be new migrations. It will be a gradual growth of our services, our storage services. Uh, so that's what I expect. And that was what I, and we look forward to.
Yeah, that's great. Uh, thank you so much, Emil, for coming on the, the Cube and, and sharing your thoughts and best of luck to you in the future. Thank you, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Okay, in a moment, I'll be back to give you some closing thoughts on at your storage service. You're watching the Cube, the leader in high tech enterprise coverage. <laughs>